And for the headlines, weather forecast, share line impacting extreme northern Luzon, easterlies influencing rest of the Philippines. Local news, the water supply to the city has been entirely severed. Water supply has been reinstated in certain areas of the city. Kobe has clarified that the request made to COWD on April 30 wasn't for immediate payment, but rather for the acknowledgement of the debt. The city is still under a state of emergency, while COCPO asserts that they do not have the power to restrain Kobe. National News Soljan is investigating Bam Ban, Mayor Alice Guo regarding her questionable background. Marcus Jr. comments on the proposal for tighter visa regulations for Chinese nationals. International News Victoria's Secret is bringing back its fashion show after six-year break. Entertainment Exploring the mechanics of Cannes from the sending ovations to the juries and even the Kirky Palm Dog Award. Star Magic Talents flaunt their sculpted bodies at the Hot Summer 2024 event. Sports A seven-year-old golfer will be representing the Philippines in the IMG Worlds Tournament. The Philippines is set to host the FIFA Futsal Women's World Cup in 2025. International Feature a Banksy Museum has debuted in New York, aiming to honor the essence of street art. National feature, Abby Marquez, known as the Olympia Queen, triumphs at the 2024 Webby Awards in New York City. Trivia, how does telecommunication work? Good morning, Philippines. Magandang umaga, Luzon. Ang mayo adlaw, Visayas, Mindanao. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Weather forecast. Share line impacting extreme northern Luzon, easterlies influencing rest of the Philippines. A distinct weather system known as a share line is currently exerting its influence over extreme northern Luzon bringing about significant meteor meteorological changes. Concurrently, the eastern side of the Philippines is experiencing the effects of easterlies, according to the latest report from the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. The share line, characterized by abrupt changes in wind direction and speed, is causing cloudy skies, occasional rains, and thunderstorms in the extreme northern Luzon area. Residents are advised to remain vigilant and take necessary precautions against potential hazards such as flash floods and landslides. Meanwhile, the rest of the country, particularly the eastern sections, is under the sway of easterlies, which are warm and humid winds originating from the Pacific Ocean. This weather pattern typically brings scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Visayas, Mindanao, and the rest of Luzon. Local news, water supply to the city has been entirely severed. Cagayan de Orobok Water Incorporated, represented by Kobe Senior Legal Officer Attorney Robert Digo, has officially cut off the water supply has officially cut off the water supply to the city. This action was taken after the Cagayan de Oro Water District failed to settle its debt on Kobe. According to Attorney Rodrigo, they have been issuing warnings for quite some time and they took action this morning following the absence of police officers guarding the water facilities at Rio Verde. Attorney Rodrigo added that it was a difficult decision for them to disconnect the water supply, but they were left with no choice since COWD hasn't taken any action. Despite numerous attempts to negotiate with COWD since 2021, 
including offering deferment of fee increases, waiving penalties during the pandemic, delaying disconnections and providing suggestions for resolution, they haven't received any official response or offer from COWD. Hence, they decided it was time to cut off the water until COWD resolves the issue. Meanwhile, the City Disaster Risk Reduction Department is prepared to provide water supply to the affected barangays. Water supply has been reinstated in certain areas of the city. The water flow has been restored to some parts of the city. This comes after Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated, represented by Kobe, cut off the supply last week, following the issue once of a temporary restraining order by the Regional Trial Court Branch 17 to ensure the continuous water supply to the city, according to Cagayan de Oro Water District General Engineer Antonio Young, it is possible that it, in the coming days, water supply will resume in certain areas. The TRO was served maybe around 9 o'clock, and around that time, they are resumed supplying water to their treatment plant because you may call, recall that yesterday, they had a problem. They stopped operations. So now, they resumed operations and are processing the water they get from the river so that it can be disrupted for people to drink. COWD General Manager Engineer Antonio Young. Kobe has clarified that the request made to COWD on April 30 wasn't for immediate payment but rather for the acknowledgement of the debt. Cagayan de Oro Water Incorporated, represented by Kobe Senior Legal Counsel Attorney Roberto Rodrigo, made it clear that their request before the water disconnection deadline on April 30 was not for an actual payment. They sought acknowledgement from Cagayan de Oro Water District regarding their debt and a plan of action. According to Attorney Rodrigo, the company has given several opportunities for dialogue, but COWD has not shown any commitment. To clarify, prior to the last day, Director Carnio already verbalized that there is an outstanding debt. How much remains right? What we were asking is, what do you think is the correct amount? So they mentioned, I think it's somewhere in the range of little, little less than 200 million. We said, okay, but put that in writing, put it in a resolution. You have a debt of 200 million according to, to your estimation. The difference will be the subject of your discussion. That would have been a good approach. You're right. We were not asking for actual payment on April 30. What we're asking for is for them to acknowledge the debt they think is correct to provide their plan addressing the differences and the remaining debt. Until now, we haven't received any reply from them. They said, oh, we haven't had a forum yet, so we haven't resolved it. Okay, you didn't make it by April 30, it's already May. Almost halfway through the month and still nothing, so it's about time. On the other hand, COWD General Manager Engineer Antonio Young does not believe that Kobe is willing to negotiate as they have been imposing terms rather than engaging in genuine negotiation. He also mentioned that if Kobe were truly open to negotiation, they wouldn't have cut off the water supply before coming to court. The city is still under a state of emergency, while Kokpo asserts that they do not have the power to restrain Kobe. City Mayor Rolando Clarex Oy clarified that the state of emergency in the city will remain in effect due to the ongoing water problem. According to Mayor Oy, the state of emergency is necessary to maintain peace and order. We will continue until things return to normal because the state of emergency remains necessary. Especially concerning peace and order, I do not want the city to be in turmoil because of the water problem. Mayor Rolando Clarex Oy. Meanwhile, Kokpo, spokesperson Police Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vidyas, clarified that they do not have jurisdiction over the Rio Verde area in Pualas. Therefore, they have no authority to control Kobe. We are conducting police presence and visibility in the Taguanao area, where the Rio Verde property is located. The Cagayan de Oro City Police Office continues to provide police presence and visibility in that area. Regarding Pualas, it's out of our jurisdiction 
It's not within our area of responsibility. Our concentration is in our coverage area, which includes Barangay in Tahag, Taguanao Crossing in Taguanao, Lumbia and Masterson Avenue, said Kokpo Spokesperson Police Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas. We interviewed a man who makes wallets, shoes, and more. So let's watch this. We don't know how to use any
National News. Soljan is investigating Bamban Mayor Alice Guo regarding her questionable background. The Office of the Solicitor General is now investigating Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Guo after suspicions on her citizenship surfaced during a Senate panel hearing pro probing her ties to a pogo. Yes, I created a special team of solitors last week to look into the matter and determine if there is good reason to believe that the subject is unlawfully holding or exercising a public office. Solicitor General Menardo Guevara said Thursday. Guevara said the OSG is currently gathering relevant information from the Commission on Elections, Bureau of Immigration, and other government agencies. Guo faced the Senate last week to answer allegations that she was backing a pogo operation in Bamban that was raided last March, where authorities found evidence of human tracking, serious illegal detention, physical abuse, and even torture. But Senator Riza Hontiveros zeroed in Guo's personal background after receiving reports that the mayor came out of nowhere last 2022 elections. Guo's apparent evasiveness to di disclose her background at the Senate raised even more suspicion from the public. According to, the, according to Guevara, a Kuo Guaranto case is possible if Guo was found to be unqualified to hold office. If it could be established by proof, the OSG will commence Guo Guaranto proceedings to oust the person concerned. Based on Comelec records, Guo declared that she is a Filipino citizen in her certificate of candidacy. The Comelec added that no one challenged Guo's qualification last election, allowing her to run and eventually win the position. Marcos Jr. comments on the proposal for tighter visa regulations for Chinese nationals. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that the government will be stricter in enforcing visa rules amid reports of the illegal entry and of overstaying of Chinese nationals in the Philippines. Marcos said due to reported abuses, the government will be stricter in enforcing immigration rules. Walang stricter rules para sa kahit kanino. Pare-pareho lang ang rules sa lahat. Ang problema lang ay maliwanag na maliwanag at lumabas sa mga report na mayroong pangaabuso nito. Kaya babantayan namin ito. So what we will do, more stricter your force, he said. Whereas dati hindi natin masyadong tinitignan kaya nakikita natin na maraming naging problema dahil hindi natin nakikita. Marami ang mga illegal na peke na dokumento, yung illegal na mga scammer, may human trafficking, maraming problema ang dala. Kaya titiyakin natin na kung may papasok ay titiyakin natin na tama. Marcos said, adding the government will verify documents to ensure there are no foreigners who can pretend to be Filipino citizens. Marcos also said the government will be stricter in allowing visa conversion from tourist to student, as there are some who falsified documents to be able to buy property in the country. DFA Undersecretary Jesus Gary Domingo earlier said that the agency is crafting a stricter visa policy that would require applicants to submit a social insurance certificate on top of other necessary documents with the goal of weeding out possible troublemakers from legitimate tourists and travelers. International News Victoria's Secret is bringing back its fashion show after a six-year break. American lingerie giant Victoria's Secret announced Wednesday that its annual fashion show scraped after 2018 due to sluggish sales and diminishing audiences will return this fall bringing high-profile models back onto its catwalk. In a video posted on Instagram, the company announced the runway show is back this fall without giving details about the date or location or which models would participate. We've read, um, we've read the comments and heard you, the group said in its post. The Victoria's Secret fashion show is back and will reflect who we are today. Plus everything you know and love, the glamour, runway, 
Wings, Musical Entertainment, and more. Back in November 2019, the oil-based company announced the cancellation of the show, which had been criticized as sexy yes and out of step with the Me Too movement that had gained support. The runway show created in 1995 was followed by millions worldwide, but viewership dwindled over the years. In 2014, it drew 9 million Americans viewers. By 2018, the figure was barely 3 million. Iconic models including Giselle Bonchen, Heidi Klum, and Adriana Lima have participated in the High Glamour event, where being one of the show's so-called angels guaranteed a certain celebrity status. Entertainers Taylor Swift, Kanye West, Rihanna, and Bruno Mars also took part. The label was owned by L Brands, but the board approved the spin-off of Victoria's Secret into a standalone company, which listed on the New York, St New York Stock Exchange in 2021. Now Victoria's Secret and Co. It includes its lingerie label, the pink brand aimed at young women, and a cosmetics and accessories division called Victoria's Secret Beauty. Entertainment. Exploring the mechanics of Kin, from the sending ovations to the jury and even the Kirky Palm Dog Award. The Kin Film Festival is hallowed ground in cinema, but understanding its unique landscape can be confounding. The Code Azure, the Code the Jure Festival, which kicked off Tuesday, is a 10 day ballet of spectacle and film work. Even the photographers wear tuxedos. Standing ovations are timed, which stopwatches and movies tend to be referred to by the names of their directors. The Alamodovar, the Malik, the Coppola. From the outside, it can seem mad. From the inside, it can be hardly less disorienting. But grasping some of Kane's Kirking and traditions can help you understand just what is unspooling in the south of France and what exactly a palm dog is. Why does Cain matter? The short answer is that Cain is the largest and arg arguably most significant film festival and few care more deeply about the art of cinema than the French. This is where cinema was born and it's where it's most closely guarded. It's not it's not a coincidence that the center of Palais de Festivals, the center hub, you must climb 24 red carpet steps as if you're ascending into some movie nirvana. Kane is also singularly global, attracting filmmakers, producers, and journalists from around the world. It's a little like Olympic for film. Countries set up their own tents in an international village. Because Kane is also the largest film market in the world, many who come here are trying to sell their movies or looking to buy up rights. Deal making, though not quite the frenzy it was, happens in hotel rooms along Crusade, abroad yachts, docked in the harbor, and yes, on Zoom calls. Star Magic Talents flaunt their sculpted bodies at Hot Summer 2024 event. Star Magic Artists on Wednesday flaunt their bodies after months of intense workouts and disciplined diet the hot summer 24 in Leia, Batangas. A total of 17 celebrities accepted the challenge of body transformation, including J.M. de Guzman, who shared his journey of commitment to fitness and health, naging mahira pero mandami naman naging learnings na nakuha sa journey ko dito, said de Guzman. At first, nahirapan talaga ako kasi ang lakit ko talaga noon, 184 pounds. Pero nag-training kami online, kahit nasa shoot ako kung hindi ako matrain, I make sure I box. And yung diet din, he added. Also joining the Transformation Challenge was actress singer Angie Salvation, who not only embraced the physical changes but emerged as hot summer 24 fan favorite. Ngayon ko lang na-realize na may learning ako na nakuha dito and yung learning ko is my diet, my discipline, she said.
Because you know what to eat already. You know what to do with your body. Grabe yung nakin kong knowledge here and I want to continue this. Actresses Chi Filomeno and Barbie Imperial and Jay Cuenca served as Hot Summer 24 ambassadors. Cuenca commended the efforts of all participants, emphasizing the dedication and hard work put into achieving their fitness goals. Highlighting the event were the performances of OPM girl group Bini, who wowed the audience with their hit singles Pan Tropico and Salamin Salamin. Sports A seven-year-old golfer will be representing the Philippines in the IMG World Tournament. Young Filipino golfer Lucas de Guzman is focused on bringing home another gold in the upcoming IMG Junior World Golf this July. The seven-year-old golfer was recently hailed champion in the 2024 Malaysian Championship held at Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, making him an IMG World Qualifier. In an interview with ABS-CBN News, De Guzman said the recent competition was tough. I did so bad in the first day, but in the next two days, I did better, he said. But his family support has encouraged him to be more versatile in his craft, which is why he doesn't feel any pressure despite competing at such a young age. Meanwhile, De Guzman shared some of his preparations for the IMG Worlds. Practice and sleep and eat. I like spam and rice because that's my favorite, he said. De Guzman, who started playing golf at the age of three, named American golfer Tiger Woods as his inspiration. Tiger Woods because I found his sport on TV and I was like, oh, I want to try it, he said. The Philippines is set to host a FIFA Futsal Women's World Cup in 2025. The Philippines will host the first ever edition of the FIFA Futsal Women's World Cup in 2025, the world's governing body for football announced on Wednesday. FIFA has yet to reveal an exact date for the tournament. A total of 16 teams will compete, with the Philippines already qualified as the host nation. According to FIFA, the remaining qualifying places have been allocated thusly. AFC 3, CAF 2, CONCAF 2, CONEMBOL 3, OF. C1, UEFA4, the 16 teams will be drawn into four groups of four, with the top two teams in each group advancing to the knockout quarterfinals. In the first FIFA Futsal's Women's World Ranking published earlier in May, Brazil was number one, followed by Spain, Portugal, Argentina, and Colombia. Thailand at number six is the highest ranked team from Asia. The Philippines was 61st. International feature. A Bansky Museum has debuted in New York, aiming to honor the essence of street art. The elusive street artist Bansky in front and center at a new museum in Lower Manhattan dedicated to his paintings. The Bansky Museum opened to the public on Wednesday with a permanent exhibition of 160 works that are curated recreations of original Bansky works. It says it is the largest such exposition in the world. Organizers of the exposition are mindful of the potential paradox at the heart of their project. How do you celebrate a street artist who shuns institutions? For museum director Hazis Vardar, the answer is to take the question head on. Everything here has been created by anonymous artists, also Vardar explained. We have done everything on this wall, so we cannot sell them. We respect the spirit of street art. The choice is to recreate the art of Bansky, which is, for me, much more important for people. Like-minded project have also opened in Barcelona, Brussels, Krakow, and Paris, all thanks to Vardar. In interviews, Vardar and museum director William Mead confirmed they have had no di direct contact with Banksy, but are assured, but are assured he appreciates such recreations, given that most of his original street work gets removed. And so the pieces take on familiar Bansky topics, 
including war and peace, economic inequality, and ter terrorism. Populated throughout are the usual Basque images, including rats, children, and protesters. Adults see one thing, children see something else. Mead explained. So on the one hand, you may see a ballerina dancing on cement or cement or on the other hand other people don't see that at all the museum at 277 canal street will be open from 10 a.m to 8 p.m admission ranges in price from 21 dollars to 30 dollars but is free for children below five national feature Abby Marquez, known as the Lumpia Queen, triumphs at the 2024 Webby Awards in New York City. Filipino content creator Abigail Marquez took home the 2024 People's Voice Award for Food and Drink and Social at the 2024 Webby Awards in New York City. Dubbed as the Oscars of the Internet, the Webbies are awards for excellence given by the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences. I feel like this is one of the biggest goals that you would want, Marquez said. I started as a content creator two years ago and so I am here. In the social media space in the Philippines, Marquez has come to be known as a Lumpia Queen. She started creating online content after her love for food and filmmaking collided while cooking dinner for her family during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's basically out of passion just to have fun in the kitchen. Marquez recalled, Now I have this platform where the world is looking at the videos that I do. It's really an opportunity to show them Filipino food. This year's top honorees include Julia Luis Dreyfus, who has the recipient of the Webby Podcast of the Year. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift was honored with Best Creator or Influence for her National Voter Registration Day collaboration with Vote org filipino american olivia rodrigo meanwhile earned a webby award in two categories arts culture and lifestyle social campaigns and celebrity fan general social trivia how does telecommunication work Telecommunication is the exchange of information over a distance through electronic means. Here's a simplified breakdown of how it typically works. Data generation. Information is created in various forms such as a voice, text, images, or video. Encoding. The information is converted into electronic signals that can be transmitted over long distances. For example, in the case of voice communication, your voice is converted into digital data. Transmission. The encoded data is transmitted through a medium which can be wired or wireless. Propagation. The transmitted signals travel through the chosen medium. In the case of wireless communication, they propagate through the air. Reception. The signals are received by the intended recipient. For example, your phone receives the radio waves Carrying a call from another phone. Decoding. The received signals are converted back into a format understandable by humans. For instance, the digital data representing your friend's voice is converted back into audible sound. Delivery. The information is delivered to recipient who can then perceive and understand it. Telecommunication systems often involve various technologies and components like transmitters, receivers, antennas, routers, switches, and protocols to ensure efficient and reliable communication. They can also include intermediary de devices like satellites or cell towers to facilitate long distance or wireless communication. And that's the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News Channel at the MD Oro. I request once more to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.